Hello and welcome to another GM Tips. As you can see, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth because, again, on the outsider races, I really, really, and again, these wouldn't be considered outsiders. These are more aberrations. Uh, but I included them in that pick because they're a popular set of race, race types and, and things to run. So I'm going to call these the horror races, the horror creatures. Um, they really are. They're, they're the old school horror with the vampires and the werewolves. Uh, I bring them up because there's a lot of systems that use them. Uh, Vampire the Requiem, Werewolf from White Wolf Games and GURPS. Um, GURP Systems does a lot with them. Uh, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeon World, even you know your D20 Modern, D20 Future, um, D20 Past, uh, your Steam games, your pure Steam and Steampunk games like uh, Tof Tefra and some of the others that are out there can use these. Uh, even in superheroes like Mutants and Masterinds and and uh, the the hero um, hero system RPG. There's also you can use them in the Savage World settings and in Fate. Uh, you can use them in Numenera if you wanted to. You can use them in Cipher System. You can use them pretty much even in the advanced systems like the Dresden Files. And uh, you could put them into the future ones. I, You know, the, the sci-fi ones, yeah, you can have them. I'm just not a huge fan of them there because, again, the settings for them aren't the best. Uh, Call of Cthulhu, you can use these in Call of Cthulhu and Chaosium, the different Chaosium uh, systems. There's a lot. Uh, uh, 13th Age, you can use them in there. Again, the nice thing about these two things, and, and, I, and I love how Paizo compilated them, the Blood of the Moon and Blood of the Night. The Night being the vampires, the Moon being the, the wares. There's a lot of different creatures when you think of these. And depending on whether you play them, now I, these are out of the player's companions, so as a GM you can do them a lot of different ways. Um, just remember that there are more than one type of vampire. There is more than one type of wear. And as this goes, we're going to hit a little bit of some of the key items and goods and bads. So I'll keep it to 20 minutes, unlike the other one. And uh, let's dive in. So we'll start with the werewolves, the blood of the moon. Werewolves and were creatures are powerful creatures. Now, you've got three spins on them. Number one, the pure wear. That is the progenitor race. They can shift at will. They can control their abilities. The moon does not affect what they do and don't do. And they can create spawn. And so the progenitor race is the most powerful. And from that spins the other types, which are the spawn the the wear spawn so if you are bitten by a progenitor you or or even in some cases a spawn you become a spawn what is the difference there you don't control your change your change is at the mercy of your gm <laughs> and at the mercy of the the times and settings of the moon the lunar cycle you do not and, and i know a lot of people are like yay i get to be a wear creature oh no 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 unless you start as a skinwalker, which is has part of that blood, where one of the progenitor spawn has mated with someone who's not, and they become a skinwalker, they're a half-breed. Or the progenitor, you have no control. So if you become a spawn, either as a vampire or as a were, it is not good for you. You do not have control. You can hurt your friends. You can hurt those people in your party. Um, same when they're out there with the baddies. The, they are... Um, I love uh, the vampire night ones because they really hit it well. Those bitten by the spawn progenitors, unless they drink the progenitor's blood and have some control, lose it and become feral creatures. It is true of this and of these. <laughs> and so keep that in mind. Unless your system limits you, I love the three builds because it really makes characters think about, do I want to be one? 
and and really same with NPCs do I want to be one or do I want to get cured or I just want to be put out of my misery because this is not going to be a good thing for us and so they do have the I love in here they have the lunar calendars for Galarian I think in any system you're in, especially when you have wear creatures, you're going to have to do some lunar calendars as a GM and set that aside. And that is some good advice because otherwise you're just going to randomly call a cycle. And depending on the lunar cycle, it depends on the strength of that particular wear creature. Now, so the wares, okay? This is the transformation cycle, and I love it. And again, if you don't have it, The Blood of the Moon does a really good job. It's not a very expensive book. It's it's twelve ninety nine in hardcover. It's I think like six or seven in PDF. Get it because it goes through how the eyes transform, the mouth, the feet, the ears, the hands, so you can call out what's going on as a GM. And you can really describe it. And I think that's part of the horrificness of it, is you can describe what is going on. Uh, you need to know the, the stigmas of how people view these. Um, the other thing was the, the becoming a lycanthrope and the curing of it. Now, a lot of books will have these. If they don't, then I suggest getting this, because it talks about the infection. It talks about um, the inheritance or the curse of it. And then, you know, how do you hide it? Or how do you try to keep away from it? How does the moon affect you and, and affect you as a, as a wear? And then the different types of gear that you can use against such creatures or as one of those creatures. Now, one of the things they really do well is they go through the generic skinwalker and the different skinwalker types. And so, again, there's only... Each system has some different types of wares, so this one just covers it from Pathfinder. But here's some of the ones they hit. They hit the wear bat kin, the wear rat kin, the wear bear kin, the wear shark, wear boar, wear tiger, wear crocodile, and wear wolf. And that's a big mount. Now they're leaving some out. Wear panthers aren't in there. Um, wear crocodiles aren't in there. Some of the others. Um, but they talk about the kin. And, and the power of the kins. Now, the kins are not as powerful. Skinwalkers have power. Again, I love this Native American view of a skinwalker. That's their hybrid type of form. Um, skinwalkers will always be noticeable. It's hard for them to hide. Um, and so, you know, the, it manifests after puberty in most of these. So they have characteristics that call them out as what they are. And they have some cool different abilities and, and traits that you can use in feats. My suggestion is this. If you're going to run a wear campaign, number one, set out the rules with your players that, okay, if you're going to start the game that way, kin is, kin is allowable. Full-blooded tough to do. I would limit characters on that because the progenitors, they're powerful. They're a powerful creature with powerful stats and powerful abilities to start off with. I would not do that and I would not give my characters the ability to do that. As a GM, yes, have those type of things. Have a master where. Uh, I love, I love that they had in one of the ones I ran, not only the master wares, but they had the master wares for tribes. And that's one of the things about wear creatures. They're tribal. So they will have tribes that, or, or um, um, yeah, I mean, it's the best way to call them is tribes, almost like nomadic tribes that move together and work together. And they have different names. And one wear tribe of the same type may not respect another one. Not all of them are evil. The one that I saw was werewolves. One was a chaotic neutral type, and they were part of the Sarni, um, which was the criminal element, um, gypsy criminal element on uh, Pathfinder World of Galarian. You can have that. And in fact, the gypsy types are really fun to run wares as. Um, it's, it's an interesting mold. And you can have a forest full of different wares, and there's a pecking order, and they may have a king that is elected from one of the tribes that governs over all the different tribal leaders and that they will respect and for the most part listen to and they're subjected to that law 
so there's a sense of even in a chaotic society a sense of some law and order to keep them from just going nutty in a fruitcake you see it a lot in um oh what's our one with kate beckinsale <laughs> i'm just blanking on it right now um underworld you see it in underworld they have it that way it's kind of structured that way with the wares so that's the wear side of things the blood of the night and again we talked a little bit about it in my last gm tips there are four types there are the maroi the Zhangxi, the Nasferatu, and the Vatala. Each of them come from the different types of vampires in different religions, kind of or different uh, cultures, sorry. Funny how they have that, huh? Uh, the Zhangxi are more from Asia, and it's more specifically from Orient Asia. The Vatala come from more of the Indian or the Persian influence. Uh, the Maroi come from the Eastern European, as do the Nesferatu. The Nasferatu. Um, the Zhangxi are vengeful seekers of signs. They are created from restless spirits in most cases, and they rise as vampires that way. The Maroi are drinkers of blood, but at the same time keep the outer beauty as a necessity, whereas the Nasferatu are more the bestial side of things. They're the ancients, and they're more bestial, and they don't care about appearance. They don't mind looking like the rotting dead. Um, the Vitala are the intellect devourers. They love to, to siphon the intellect and the mental mind powers. So keep that in mind. Uh, very powerful, powerful abilities on each. And they go through the necrology, the desires of each in this book. Again, another book worth getting just from the fact that they give you some compilations of how they think. And I think for us as GMs, we need to get into the minds more of our creatures and think like they do. So a Maroi is not going to act like an Asferatu. They are not bestial. They are not going to just tear somebody apart from limb from limb because they're living. There is a decorum, a court, a following of the veneer of civility in a Maroi. Whereas the Damfir, or the, excuse me, the, um, the uh, Nasferatu don't care. They care about eating the living life, life essence. And a great example of it is if you ever read the Dresden Files, and if you haven't, do Jim Butcher's books. He goes through the three courts of the vampires, okay? There are the white court. There's a white court. The white court would be more the Zhang Shi and the Vitala, where they suck living essence and, and, and emotions to age the person. They don't drink the blood, they drink the emotions. Um, the red court, which are the Maroi, they are the blood suckers, okay? But there's still a decorum of a court. The black court is the. Is the um, Nasferatu, and they are just destructive. They are the decaying, destructive element of evil. That kind of coincides with this, and it does a great job of describing each. As you can see, the boy decorum. The Nasferatu does not care. They love the horror. They love the hunt of the prey and tearing them apart and sensing that. Um, they are, they are called the moldering cadavers. Um, they're blackened, receding gums, missing teeth, hairless, oversized knuckles and joints. Spins, um, skin is splitting across the skull and often taut joints. Uh, hangs loose, sunken eyes, uh, yellowing of fingernails. So there is less of the decorum to them. Now... The Vitala love the life essence and memories. They savor sucking the, the, the life essence. So they will steal memories. Um, they have a true name. Uh, they have rituals and things that they follow. So keep that in mind. They have different types of vampires, how they work together. Not all of them are going to work for the same agenda, just like the courts in Harry Dresden. They don't work to the same means to an end. And Nosferatu does not like being caged to a Maroi. They are very different thinkers. The Maroi tolerate the Nosferatu, even though they may look like 
the courtier type, they are considered like the moldering body. So they don't want that around them. They don't want that loss of life. Um, how do they do their forms and, and what is it? Every one of them does not take the bestial form or control the swarms or go gaseous. Certain ones have different aspects to them. And so keep that in mind. Getting to know these is important, especially even when playing a progeny, a Dom Fear. The Dom Fear are different. And, and let me give you some excerpts out of here because this is how broadly different. You can do a general Dom Fear and its general characteristics, okay? However, for instance, the Zhangxi, called the Rushi. A Zhangxi born is usually the result of some vow ritual or magical possessed father rather than the Congress between two human beings. The Rushi's skin remain gray regardless of the exposure to sun, and their eyes have iris, light irises and pupils. Their movements are, are stiff and awkward. They are very mathematically and linguistically given, though some of, the, some of them cast aside their natural gifts, bitter and scornful, um, because they remind them they're forebearers. Okay? So they're the intellectuals. They're the thinkers. But they're not graceless. They're not graceful. They're graceless. The Maroi are very graceful. Brought forth by haughty or brutal Maroi, Svochers are renowned and feared for their silver tongue and deadly strength. So often they are royal. They want to be no noble or hold noble bearing. They want to be respected. They want to carry a sense of life. That's why they like to drink the life blood because they want to feel life. Even though they are an undead creature that lives thousands of years, they want to feel life and live it in a, in a kind of a uh, mock sense is almost the way of doing it. The Nosferatu, cursed from birth with the remnant of their forebearers wasting illness, the ancient born instinctively know both hate and fear. Um, the ancient born's hatred for humanity is reflected in their appearance. Um, from birth they are mishappen, sallow, and painfully thin, abused for their disgust disgusted peers um, because they look at the skin and, the, and their physical weakness. Lacking the gift of immortality to offset the wasting effect of the curse they're born with, these chalky complexion scars are easily bruised and, uh, like an overripe peach. Um, ancient born's unsettling appearance makes their participation in society challenging. So often they're looked down upon. The ancient born are common in certain areas of the world. So they're wasting from the time they're born, as are their progenitors. Even though they live a long time, there's a wasting going on. Now the Vitala born, the uh, Ajibakana, um, with skin like faded brass, Ajibakanas re um, reveal their undead taint through their unnatural agility and childlike trains of thought. Um, so they're more, more childlike, but they want to get memories. They want knowledge. They want to live through someone else's eyes. Again, very different in how they look at things with their philosophies. So when running these, they're going to have differences in how they run them. They can't, in other words, challenge your players and challenge your NPCs not to appear all like Maroi or all like Nasferatu. They have to be closer to their progenitors. Even if they put their tilt on it, kind of hold a little bit of that, because otherwise you lose the sense of the differences. They're very starkly different. Now, a spawn does not have control. They are they are fueled by the unnatural hunger of the per, of that that turned them. So they're going to be more bestial, even in you know the, what they're doing. They're they're more they're they're less human. And much more driven like an animal under that influence. So keep that in mind that the spawn are not going to automatically, and they are linked to their progenitor. Unless they kill their progenitor, which they are cannot do, they're held almost to a sense where they can't do that. You you have to almost have a character in the party free them, and then they become the master. But even that, it depends on how much they've learned. They would be much less refined if they haven't had much time under their master and teaching. They're going to be much more like a wild beast. So, in looking at these things, keep in mind, yes, they're fun to play, they're unique, they're different, 
but there are parts of them that, that your players have to get to know. And just keep that in mind, What no matter what system you run them in, there is a similarity across that. And you can do research on it. The great thing is our cultures have history on that. So with that, I'm going to keep to my word. 20 minutes. Have fun. Have a great week. And email me any questions.